So one of my new YouTube friends told me about the green gold challenge. There was only one thing I could say about that. Challenge accepted. Let's go paint something. Green gold really is one of my favorites in my paint box. I know that I tend to say that about a lot of my colors, um, but it's always true. Green gold is, to me, the colour of sunlight dancing across grassy fields. So I knew straight away that I wanted to paint some sort of landscape. And recently I painted a lavender series. And one of the things I really enjoyed in that series was painting the rows and rows of lavender. I have a bit of a fondness for those lovely perspective lines and undulating fields. So between my memories of my landscape paintings and the gorgeous vineyards that are uh, relatively close to where I live, I had a bit of a picture in my mind of the sort of thing I wanted to paint. So I set about putting in a few quick sketch lines just to give me some sort of guidance. And then of course the first colour I turn to is green, my green gold. I work mostly in watercolour, so I'm using my watercolour paints. And the green gold that I've got is a schminky paint and it's actually called green yellow rather than green gold. And I pop that onto the, the damp page so that the sky would blend out softly. Uh, but I didn't want a completely uniform wash, that's really not my thing. And I have a, another gold in my paint box, quinacridone gold, which uh, is, of course, another favourite. And I have to say, it does feel like a bit of a luxury to have them both because they're very similar. Um, if you already had one of them in your paint box, I don't think you'd actually need the second one unless you're a, a crazy colour obsessed lady like me. The quinacridone gold is a bit warmer, I think, so it's got a bit more of that orangey-red colour in it, whereas the, the green-yellow, as the name suggests, is far more on the, the greeny side of yellow as opposed to um, the, the gold side. And I have started out, uh, because I'm working in watercolour, thinking about where the light is first, uh, and popped in those lovely uh, sunlit leaves on the top of all those vines and then um, it's a very relaxing process to set about adding slightly darker tones to form those rows of beautiful vines and I always favour a very loose approach it's the thing that makes my heart happy and I think that's the best way to go about painting is painting what makes you happy in the way that makes you happy so I am not trying to paint every leaf and every vine. I'm painting the lights and darks that make up the, um, the landscape itself. And it's an awful lot of fun. I did have to have a bit of a think about what colour to use in the darks there. Because it did occur to me that I might have popped in something like a burnt sienna to do more of that bare earth sort of feeling. But that would have brought the, the whole palette uh, to be slightly warmer and I definitely wanted to stick to the, the greeny yellow feel. So I opted to go for something like a deep indigo to put in my darkest darks on those vines. And I'd started with the sky so that that would be dry. Um, by the time I'd finished painting that main um, hill in the foreground. And that now leaves me able to put in those uh, distant fields. Uh, and then the field on the side. So I got a chance to play with all my favourite greens and blues using the uh, bluer ones into the background and the yellowy ones into the, the foreground to hopefully bring them close to us. And I couldn't resist another opportunity to do those gorgeous lines that I have such a fondness for. But I have to wait until the watercolour paint has settled into the paper a bit, otherwise you won't be able to see the lines at all. And while I was doing that, I noticed that 
I had a little bit of a bloom forming. And if you paint in watercolour, you know what I mean. It means there's this little cauliflower shape that appeared because there was too much water at the top of the hill. So I decided that that would be the perfect place to pop in some distant trees, which I did with that same uh, indigo that I'd used in my darks. And then I went back to my, my stripes, my rows of darks and lights to add another field going in a different direction. I do love these lines. And then we're pretty much done. It was a fantastic um, painting to paint in, and, and I had so much fun painting with the green gold uh, and thinking in terms of this colour palette that I think I just might have to do another one. So all that's left to do is to pop in my last little field section there and then I get to do my favourite part of all. Is it your favourite too? It's the pulling off of that tape. It makes all the difference. And to be honest, I don't normally bother with the taping, but it's something I started doing recently only because I like pulling it off. Seems an odd thing to do, but there you are. It does leave you with some nice, crisp, clean edges. Here we go. You'll see what I mean. It changes the picture completely to take away that green tape around the edges. And there it is. Thank you so much, Dina. That was a wonderful challenge to participate in.